Hi, Taylor Bradford. Nice to see you. Hey, good to see you guys as well. What do you have this week in the Gloucester Daily Times? All right. So the beginning of this week, I kind of filled you guys in about a story that um, Ethan Foreman had been reporting on about how the Northeast Arc had lost or could not find about 9,500 gowns that they were using to help those um, who were working on the front lines, who were working with clients. And, you know, that's a lot of money. And so the question all week was, where are these gowns? And they have been found in customs. Um, so they said that 6,000 gowns were, were shipped out Tuesday and are on the road. Another 3,500 gowns were still in customs, um, as according to Tim Brown, uh, Northeast Arc's director. Um, so those gowns have been found. Um, again, that was a lot of money that they were wondering where it could have been. Um, there's about an $87,000 order um, for the 16 different organizations. And so asking the question of where is that money, where are the things that are going to help the community um, was a big, big question mark, but those have been found, which is exciting. Um, and then also some unfortunate news that I know the community has been talking up since it was released earlier this week. Um, St. Peter's Fiesta has been postponed. Um, so the festivities that were scheduled for June have now been postponed to two days in September, September 12th and 13th, but they obviously are still kind of waiting to hear, you know, as stay-at-home orders are constantly being pushed back, kind of figuring out vendors, what that might look like. So as of right now, um, Greasy Pole, all the different events and parades um, won't be happening um, at their regular time. So, but we'll see how that story develops as we kind of continue into the summer and see what the new normal looks like um, during these warmer months. So those are kind of the hard hitting things that have been going on, the big changes within the city. Um, but we also have some of those really awesome feel good stories about what the community is doing to help one another out during this time. So that we have the YMCA has actually um, taken their gymnasium and turned it into an area for 30 um, homeless community members to be able to stay there, stay safe during this time. I know I briefly talked about this last time, but they are doing practicing proper social distancing, making sure that everything is spaced out accordingly. They have TV projection, they have food from open door, and also they get takeout on the weekends. So a lot of really cool things happening there. They say it's not always easy, but they've been able to collaborate and make sure that people are able to get out on walks um, and kind of explore the area. So that was um, a partnership between the YMCA and um, you have, um, it was the YMCA and Action, Action Inc. Action Inc. Yep. Um, and LifeBridge were able to collaborate um, to be able to put this together for the community. So really cool opportunity. And again, they're collaborating with Open Door, local organizations to not only help these people in need, but also the, the local restaurants in the area. Um, so, and the last piece of news that I have for you guys today is, I don't know if you guys were out and about in Gloucester last night, um, but there's some light projections going on throughout the city. Um, so we have Cape Ann Museum and um, was able to, and Harbor Voices, um, were able to project um, a thank you to the health workers, um, healthcare providers over last night and they're going to be doing it again through friday this week um so thank you frontline heroes will be projected um up on um, the white ellery house by grant circle and that's an opportunity for um, the community to kind of see um you know those people who are being out in the front lines but again this is not an event for people to go to see because what they have done is that illuminarts has who is kind of the people who run the whole show they have been taking those and doing a live stream on Facebook so people can see it. So while the canvas really is the screen for the the thank you projections is the are these buildings all across Cape Ann, the screen that they want you to be able to be on and see it is your Facebook or your computer screen because they don't want traffic, they don't want to disrupt that, they also don't want groups gathering. So That'll be going on from about 8.30 to 10.30 every single night for the rest of the week. Um, but, but be sure to check that out and also know that that's a part of a larger initiative that's been going on called Light Up the Night. And so those projections have been going up in different secret pop-up locations all across Cape Ann and the North Shore. Um, so they come up at different times. But when you see one, just know that it is a community effort that is being donated. The time, the artwork. Um, the locations are all being donated by the community for this cause to kind of bring awareness and a sense of hope to the community. So those are the stories that I have for you guys today. And um, I know there's a few things developing, but that's kind of what happened this week, which is pretty exciting. Yeah. yeah. We have beautiful tulips along the boulevard, right? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. The spring has sprung and people are definitely trying to get out where they can. Um, and you can see that the gardeners are really putting in some time on the boulevard to kind of raise awareness of, you know, that the seasons are changing and it is getting warmer, which is very exciting. Very cool stuff. And I can guarantee you that late in June, someone's going to have a, a faux greasy pull in their backyard. Oh, you know that. <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind. <laughs> All right, Taylor, thanks again. Have a great weekend, and we'll catch up with you next Monday. All right, sounds great. Have a great weekend. Bye, Taylor. Thank you. Bye.